citizens. Today, sales are up, the dream is reached. That message called on us to resist quick fixes and to oppose legislation for bailouts of the housing industry. We agreed. Over 600,000 realtors stood with him. <laughs> I don't know of anything that is. Please sit down. Why would you like to go to work on the deficit? <laughs> 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 uh, you can have as much success. I don't know of anything that has ever taken off with such an impact around the nation. And I have gotten around and if you want to participate in a number of the seminars and everything that followed your uh, your program or your report that, that came in and uh, how widespread at the local level without suddenly a federal program uh, with a few billion dollars and so forth that uh, no, the people just heard, they read and they, they took off and I just finished in the other room talking to some columnists here and uh, this general subject and said that I indicated that never have 
a service such as you've done, been able now to see the fruits of your efforts so quickly. It's, in a little bit, we'll be out on the South Lawn and we'll be giving awards to individual students. But to, uh, to see this is so rewarding for all that you've accomplished. And what I told the colonists in there is I now look and I'm going to think it'll happen in the very near future that we will see the colleges and universities cancel their bonehead courses where they oh, now they nice. have catch-up <laughs> courses. <laughs> uh, it's completely the contrary. We had a devil at the time, finding a time when they could come over here, the team, and allow me to honor them <laughs> here at the White House because he would not allow them to cut any classes. <laughs> he insists that they are students first and basketball players second. Mr. President, we have, uh, as you recall, you were going to make an award to the chairman, and then afterward, after the president leaves, I wrote to the others. And so uh, maybe we could have that presentation, if that's OK. This you're the last to see it. Well, thank you. I can't tell you how grateful we all are for it. You just, I don't know whether you threw a bomb or created a miracle or part of the waters, but, <laughs> but something has happened in, in America. And I don't want to leave you because I guess we're all going to meet out on the yes, South Lawn there in honor of some 57 students. States. Thank you very much. We always like to plan nice weather for these things so you can have a good time while you're cutting school. We did a little checking the other day and found out that this is the 43rd time that I have spoken on education in the past three and a half years. And that, and that doesn't include such things as the, what Teddy Roosevelt said was the bully pulpit of this office. A modern de Tocqueville came searching for the heart of this country today I would tell him to go to those junctions where family, church, town, and school meet, for that's where America is. We came to Washington believing that education was the key to the oceans. And I can say you, because the commission is right here, you did just that. are reviewing steps to make textbooks more challenging. Eight states have lengthened the school day and seven have lengthened the school year.
heard about one such case in Indiana. The local school board wanted to encourage better high school attendance. So they offered a $100 reward for any student who graduated with a perfect attendance record their senior year. Well, word got around. And the kids stopped cutting classes. And now the school board has found that close to 200 students made perfect attendance records and they'll have to come up with $20,000 before graduation day. I've been watching our young students making is that education is back on the agenda. All over this country, there has been a renaissance of interest in Dr. Gardner as head of the National Commission on Excellence in Education. I just want to say, And a few years later, President Johnson followed up that concern by creating the President's Physical Fitness Award. Well, this year, we instituted the President's Academic Fitness Award. And I am pleased to announce that more than 220,000 graduating high school seniors are recipients of the first awards. You are First of all, from Alabama, Charlene Williams. <laughs> is profoundly deaf, and in spite of that handicap, she won this award. And so I especially want to salute Stephanie as she comes up to receive this. Arkansas, Lewis Soloff. <laughs> Mr. President from Connecticut hasn't been in this country very long as the valedictorian of her class, Rosette Nugent. From the District of Columbia, Laura Collins. And Sean Shears from the District of Columbia. From Florida, also from Florida, Luella Jennings. From Georgia, Raymond Randall Weiss. From Hawaii, Miley Jean Liu. From Kentucky, Kathy Rowland, Stephen John Snyders. And from Minnesota, Cynthia Oprenovich. Thank you. 